All right, excellent. Uh, we're all online here. So um, it is my pleasure to introduce my friend and colleague, Dr. Yi Tan. Dr. Yi Tan, after receiving his PhD in biomedical engineering, <laughs> He joined the department in 2011 as a research associate, becoming assistant professor of pediatrics in 2013. And in that time period, in addition to his efforts at the Pediatric Research Institute, he joined as an associate at the Novak Diabetes Center. In 2019, he received tenure and was promoted to associate professor of pediatrics, pharmacology, and toxicology. And in 2020, he was named the Carol B. McFerrin Endowed Chair in Juvenile Diabetes. Dr. Tan's uh, research uh, has been supported by the NIH, the American Diabetes Association, the JDRF, and the DOD. He's included studies into diabetes complications and molecular pharmacology, specifically uh, diabetes, cardiomyopathy, vasculopathy, kidney disease, and liver steatosis. His research focus includes the mechanism of metabolic disorders, oxidative stress, and the development of diabetes complications, and the therapeutic potential of growth factors and the receptors, which is a topic that uh, I'm excited to hear more about today. And so today he'll share some of this exciting work uh, and his presentation is titled Endocrinized FGF1 Prevents Metabolic Symptom and Complications. Okay, so you're done, right? Yes, that's okay. I, could, I could actually keep talking actually. <laughs> okay, thank you. So we're gonna take care of you anymore because uh, hello everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to share my our recent work with uh, all you guys right here. Also uh, uh, online in, in virtual. So today my talk is about the FGF1 and uh, its function in in the development of metabolic syndrome and uh, uh, its uh, potential translational, um, translational potential in diabetic complications. So, uh, so firstly, I want to in, uh, introduce some background information. What is uh, FGF1? One moment, probably. Uh, I used the wrong. One moment, I just uh, click the wrong slides. Here we go. Yeah, I, use, I need to use another one. Oh, a different PowerPoint? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, okay. The only one that's right. Yeah, this is the new one. Okay. Uh, is that the right one? Yeah, sorry <laughs> for the. Go ahead and click on that, the little uh, yeah. V. Yeah, that way it won't. There we go, perfect. So, yes, uh, no conflict of interest is closed to disclose. And uh, so, firstly, I want to introduce a little bit of background information about the FGF1. FGF1 is basically it's, uh, called the fibroblast growth factor. It's a big family. So far, 22 members has been identified in this super family. Based on its receptor and the ligand inter interaction, it was in, divided into th uh, three subfamily. The first subfamily is the interocrine FGF. Another one is uh, the big, biggest one is the pyrocrine uh, FGF. The third one is the endocrine FGF. So let me introduce the, uh, what is the intracranial FGF. Intracranial FGF basically just uh, uh, in, uh, exert its function, doesn't no, no necessarily need the, the receptor. It's secreted by one cell and uh, works on the same cell, like that. Paracranial FGF uh, need uh, the interaction between ligand and the receptor, also it's cool receptor. Generally, uh, the pyrocrine FGF uh, cool receptor is uh, uh, heparin sulfate. So the endocrine FGF also need uh, the receptor and the cool, the cool receptor, but it's secreted by one cell and uh, works on the 
non-distance uh, organ. For example, excreted by liver, but uh, exerted its function in adipose tissue and the skeletal muscle or other tissue. The pericone FGF1 just secreted in the local cell and uh, works uh, on the adjacent cell. Uh, normally, uh, uh, don't, don't need, to say, say, uh, need to be secreted into the circulation and uh, uh, works on the long distance organ. So basically, FGF1 is a fond member of the uh, FGF family. It's a uh, uh, very important metagenic factor, play a very important role in cell growth, cell survival, cell differentiation, differentiation migration, and also proliferation like that, yeah. Also, FGF1 plays important in angiogenesis, neurogenesis, uh, embryo development, also very important for like a wound healing, regenerative, regenerative medicine. Before 2014, um, most studies indicated that FGF1 is uh, very important. It's the most important function, it's a metagenic function. That means it induces self differentiation, migration, and uh, uh, cell growth like that. In 2014, Dr. Uh, even, uh, Dr. Evans group found that FGF1 is actually is also an important metabolic regulator, also has function to regulate the metabolic function in the uh, regulated metabolic homeostasis. For example, they found that FGF1 is a novel new insulin sensitizer. They found that in OBUB mice, FGF1, one dose FGF1 treatment, FGF1 can time, time dependent and dose dependent decrease the blood glucose levels in OBOB mice. This is a one dose acute injection, one dose peripheral injection. Uh, for chronic, in, uh, after chronic uh, administration of FGF1, we can say after six, 16 days of FGF1 treatment, can constantly normalize the blood glucose levels of DBDB, OBOB mice. You can say the 100 micro, microgram per deal is uh, uh, very close to the normal uh, blood uh, glucose level of the normal mice, also uh, healthy human, uh, human subjects. There is no hypoglycemia was reserved during this treatment period. So it uh, looks like it's very important. It's very sensitive for the uh, lowering blood glucose levels. Two, late, two years later, another group also found that central brain one dose injection of GF1 is uh, induced the sustained remission of hypoglycemia in, in diabetic rat. You can see this is just the one tenth, the dose level, just one tenth of the peripheral injection. So one dose central brain injection can induce a constantly uh, lower uh, normal blood glucose level in the in the deep right. You can see this is uh, 18 weeks, almost half a year, one dose injection, almost completely cured the diabetic phenotype. It's very uh, exciting. So they also tested the uh, glucose tolerance after four weeks and 18 weeks after the uh, FGF1 injection. You can see at the two time points, the glucose tolerance also significantly improved in the diabetic rats. So at the same time, several groups also discussed, explored the association of the blood FGF1, blood FGF1 association with the development of a diabetic like a metabolic syndrome. For example, this study found that the FGF1 levels are elevated in newly diagnosed uh, type 2 diabetes compared to the normal, uh, uh, normal subjects, healthy subjects in, in adults. Another study found that the FGF1 also involved, uh, involved in the uh, metabolic syndrome development in obese children and uh, adolescents. I want to use this study as an example to explain how FGF1 associated with the development of diabetic um, like, uh, metabolic syndrome. Here is the uh, data. They found that, uh, first, they directly compared the FGF1 levels between the uh, healthy control and the obesity group. They found that the uh, obesity group has a much higher level of FGF1 in the blood compared to the uh, cont uh, health control. Even among the obesity group, they found that uh, 
the obesity without insulin resistance has much has a little bit lower of the obesity with insulin resistance. You can see never right here is the level of H of one is a little bit is a little bit higher in the obesity with insulin resistance, but in the statistical level is uh, uh, significant. It's a uh, biological uh, meaningful. Yeah. At the same time, they also uh, an, an, an analyzed the F, uh, blood FGF1 with the uh, phenotype of the obese, uh, the metabolic syndrome. They found that FGF1 is possibly associated with the BMI and uh, with this uh, circumstance and uh, LDL levels, HbA1c, and uh, uh, fasting insulin levels, also insulin resist uh, resistance indexes. So this uh, further indicates that the FGF1 is uh, positively associated with the development of metabolic syndrome in obese children and uh, adolescents. The further uh, uh, detected, uh, determined the association between FGF1, uh, between the development of metabolic syndrome in the obese patients with or without, uh, before or after a lifestyle inter uh, intervention. The, they use the lifestyle you may include the moderate uh, moderated caloric uh, caloric restriction and the daily physical activity improved the activity and uh, then you, you include the obese children and the uh, adolescents with uh, body weight change more than five percent after six months of intervention then compare the blood fgf levels before and after intervention they found that after intervention six six months intervention the blood fgf level is uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, obviously lower than before uh, intervention they also statistically uh, significant so this this data in that the clinical observation in that fgf1 is uh, it's a possible associated uh, with the obesity development, but uh, this association is a uh, is a uh, beneficial or detrimental. We we don't know, right? So we then we go back to check the literature to say uh, want to say more of it, more evidence. We found that 2000 there is a publication in Nature in 2000 they found that the attenuation of fgf1 FGF signaling is uh, important for the development of diabetes they found that deletion the signaling of fgf1 signal in beta cell will induce the development of uh, type 2 diabetes they found that fgf1 receptor 1 and 2 also lag in the fgf1 2 3 4 5 7 and 10 expressed in beta cells if a block, uh, attenuation of the signaling FGF1, FGF receptor signaling, specifically FGF R1C signaling, induces the development of uh, diabetes with the aging and process. The phenotype is very close to the human diabetes uh, described in this study. 16 years later, another study published in 2016 in Diabetes, they found that FGF1 with the age over nutrition induced the compensatory beta cell differentiation. Another study also found that uh, in 2019 found that the central and the peripheral FGF1 injection can improve pancreatic, pancreatic island insulin circulation in diabetes and improve the phenotype of diabetic animal. Mouse. So this data indicates that the association of FGF1 with the metabolic syndrome is uh, uh, most likely is a compensatable uh, upregulation. Probably FGF1 if supplementation of FGF1 can improve the uh, diabetic phenotype in the in diabetes in diabetic mice, probably also in diabetic human. However, if, if so in case the FGF1 is very promising to translate to uh, into the clinical situation to treat diabetes. However, relative FGF1, as I mentioned, so has a very strong metagenic function. So the metabolic metagenic function will have a high risk to induce the tumor genesis, tumor evasion, and the metastasis. 
So if we use the late wave GF1, um, probably it's difficult to translate uh, to treat uh, to treat the human patient. So we ask this question: If is it possible to reduce the metabolic fu metagenic function but maintain its retain its meta metabolic function of GF1, and uh, then use the modified FGF1 to treat di diabetes? So the short answer is yes. So next day I want to introduce how it happened. So uh, we go back to review the interaction between the uh, receptor and the ligand in pyrocrine FGF and uh, endocrine FGF. In the endocrine FGF family, include the FGF lighting 21 and 23. All, all the three factors already well established that they, uh, play, play, they play a very important role to regulate the beta, uh, glucose and the lipid metabolism in, in obesity and diabetes. So we found that the receptor and the co-receptor interaction between these uh, two subfamilies is very, very similar, but it's different. The first difference is they, they have a different, uh, different uh, co-receptor. Pyrocrine FGF1 has heparin as a co-receptor. Endocrine FGF has alpha or beta close as a co-receptor. So this uh, result is a different uh, uh, characteristics of the binding of unit be between the ligand and the receptor. So the binding between the FGF, pyrocrine FGF family, the binding of unit is much higher. I think it's tenfold higher than the uh, endocrine FGF receptor and its re uh, ligand and the receptor binding of unit. So based on this um, um, characteristics, we have our, we had our hypothesis that the interaction between the FGF ligand and the receptor, the control regulates function like a switch. So if uh, no interaction, no function. Weak function uh, has uh, weak interaction has uh, uh, has uh, weaker and uh, strong interaction has different uh, biological function. So specifically for FGF1, for example, the you, probably there is uh, no interaction of FGF receptor with its uh, ligand, so there is no function. If uh, there is a weak interaction, for example, FGF receptor and a uh, weaker interaction with its receptor can transcend the dimerization and uh, it triggers the downstream signaling, can trigger the metabolic function. Because this is very sim similar like uh, the endocrine FGF, because endocrine FGF Binding with uh, its receptor is uh, is a transient interaction, and the binding, binding affinity is very low, is much lower than the pericrine family, therefore FGF. So the strong interaction is uh, necessary for the meta metagenic function. Strong interaction can trigger both metabolic and metagenic function. So that's our hypothesis. So to want to test this hypothesis. We established the collaboration with Dr. Dr. Musa Muhammad from NYU. He's an expert in this field. He's very good at the interaction, the structure, and the, uh, the structure and the function of FGF1 ligand and the receptor. So after we established the collaboration, we found that the, these three amino acids in FGF1. Like less in 127, 28, and uh, 133, it's important for FGF1 binding with its uh, heparin co receptor. So, we hypothesize that if we replace these three amino acids, most likely we can reduce the binding affinity of FGF1 and uh, its uh, co receptor and uh, then reduce its uh, biological function. Hopefully, can maintain the metabolic function at the same time. So here is uh, our project, uh, the uh, experiment design. This is white type FGF1. This is a mutant FGF1. We call the delta HBS. We just replaced the, these three amino acids using RT-PCR and uh, based on the sequence of the white type FGF1, and uh, then express this protein in bacteria, and uh, then get the pure protein, get it as a candidate drug, and uh, then test use different animal model to test its function. Firstly, we test, we compare its uh, binding infinite with uh, heparin. So 
use a chip, use a heparin binding and chip assay, we found that this is a white type of FGF1. We can say the binding of the KD is 27, nine more. It's very low. So if uh, for the delta HBS, the KD is much higher, is 50 micromolar, is uh, 7,000 higher than, than, than the white type of FGF1, the binding finish. So then we test the it's a biological function in cell culture. We use the hypothesis. We compare the white type and the mutant FGF1. We can see the white type of FGF1 can dose dependently increase, induce the receptor and the receptor substance phosphorylation and the downstream signal arc phosphorylation. You can see this is a different dose of white type of FGF1. But for the mutant, even at the similar dose level, the activation of this downstream signal is much reduced, much uh, banished. It's significantly banished. This data was summarized there, quantified right here. Then we compared its metagenic activity. We treat the white type mice use a higher dose, that's um, one microgram per, per, kilo body, uh, per uh, uh, kilogram body weight. We treat these mice with uh, white type and uh, mutant FGF1 for three months. And uh, then we test the cell proliferation in the liver tissue. We use KI67 and the PCA as the cell proliferation marker. We use uh, IHSA staining. You can see the arrow indicates the positive staining, indicates that FGF1 white type treatment, long term treatment, induces the significant hypothesis proliferation. However, in, in the white type, in the mutant FGF1 treated uh, liver, there is no significant cell proliferation compared to the white type. It's very close to the, the vehicle control treated the mass. We also tested the ki 7 and the PCN expression uh, using Western blood in the liver tissue. So this did indicate that the mutant FGF1 really reduces the metagenic activity, but the, we don't know the metabolic function. So then we test the, compared the metabolic function in DBDB mice. DBDB mice is one type of transgenic, uh, G, uh, transgenic uh, type two diabetic model. We purchased the mice from Jackson Lab. And uh, we found that you can see after treatment, the Y type FGF1 and the both F Y type FGF1 and the mutant F FGF1 can significantly decrease the blood glucose level in DBDB mice. This is a mice without treatment. This is the, the, blood, the red and the blue one is with treatment. This is the black one is the normal mice, a healthy mice. So the black one, the after 28 days treatment, during this 28 day treatment, the blood glucose are almost completely normalized, right? But uh, there's no significant effect on the body weight, on the body weight. Then we checked the liver lipid accumulation. The, the, the middle one is uh, all your red O staining to say the accumulation of the lipid in the liver tissue. We can say this is a healthy mass. Right here is the DBDB mass, type 2 diabetes mass. It's after white type and the mutant FGF1 treatment. So the liver lipid accumulation obviously significantly reduced. We also quantified the triglyceride, tri, tri, triglyceride level in the liver tissue. We can see the almost completely normalized the triglyceride accumulation in the liver tissue. Also, FGF1 treatment, both the white type and the mutant, inhibited the uh, fatty acid synthesis gene expression in liver tissue. So this did that confirm that this mutation is a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, or proved our, one of our hypothesis. This mutation reduces the metagenic, metagenic function, but it retains its metabolic function. It's where uh, the, the metabolic function of the mutant FGF1 is very close to the white type of FGF1. Yeah, this right here. Probably so because the mutant FGF1 is much safer because the meta, metagenic function reduced. It's much, it's much safer than the white type of FGF1. Then we want to test uh, 
Uh, yeah, this this paper just published uh, four years ago, just published uh, in Cell Report. So if you want to know more detail about this project, you can read this paper. And uh, then we want to test if the mutant FGF1 can be used to treat diabetes and uh, uh, treat diabetic complications. We tested, we already tested two models. The first one is the NIVOD, and that's a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Another one is uh, atherosclerosis. So the first one is uh, after uh, Zoe, yeah, joined my, the, my PhD student after she joined joined my uh, my my lab when we start we started this study. So because in clinical situation, most uh, okay is that uh, the uh, life had already uh, happened in the liver, but the diagnosis is much uh, much. Uh, 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 significantly delayed after the establishment of the disease, right? So develop the drug for, <laughs> for, for, like, uh, for treatment and uh, reverse the disease is much, and uh, reverse the pre-existing disease is much important for prevention, right? Yeah, there, if there is no disease, nobody wants to take any drug. But after the disease happened, we need a drug and reverse or so treatment of this disease. So we want, so we use the, uh, later stage the type 2 diabetes want to see if this drug can reverse the established fatty liver in, in mice. This, this is a DBDB uh, mice, nine months old DBDB mice. Uh, why we call this the latest stage uh, type 2 diabetes? Because the whole lifespan of DBDB mice is normally 12 months. So nine months is very close to, to the end of the lifespan. So we, we, we call this the late, late stage diabetes. So before the treatment, we checked the liver damage. We found the edge staining. We can see there's many um, evacuation bubble in the liver tissue. Also, all your red staining can see there's a much higher uh, lipid accumulation in the liver tissue. So then we treat these mice with uh, mutant FGF1 for three months and uh, 0 0.5 microgram per per kilogram body weight every other day, and then we check the liver tissue. We found, we found that the three-month treatment, during the three-month treatment, consistent with our young mice, young DPD mice result, we found that three-month treatment almost completely normalized the, the blood glucose levels in the, old, in, in the late stage old DPD mice. But uh, right here is, uh, has a slightly effect on the body weight, but significantly reduce, reduce the body weight. Most in, interesting that we can see the liver tissue, there's the no treatment, the weaker treatment. We can see, almost we can see uh, obvious lipid drop in the liver tissue. After treatment, the corner and also the lipid drop already almost disappear, right? If we quantify the liver weight, significantly reduce the liver weight. So we check the liver uh, slides. We found that you can see without treatment, a significant damage right here. All, all your red staining show the lipid accumulation right here. After treatment, so the lipid accumulation is significantly reduced. We found by the data right here. So the treatment uh, improved the, the liver injury, indicated the ALT activity, AST activity, also improved the liver in inflammation. TNF alpha, PI1, MCP1, and ICOM1 expression. Also improved the liver oxidative stress indicated by MDA content in the liver tissue. We also explored the potential mechanism. In the DPDB mice, after treatment, FGF1, the mutant FGF1 treatment significantly increases the FGF2 is a very important transcription factor regulate many like uh, antioxidant protein expression. So the nuclear translocation in, means that it increases the activity of transcription uh, of the NOP2 transcription activity. So this also combined with the NK1 and the whole one is done some antioxidant protein expression. And uh, at the same time, FGF1 treatment inhibits the, the SRBP1 maturation. This is also another transcription factor regulates the lipid lipogenesis, lipid, uh, lipid synthesis in the liver tissue. Also, FG1 treatment 
uh, inhibited its uh, SRB2 and downstream SCD1 fatty acid synthesis expression. At the same time, FGM treatment uh, activated the AMPK. AMPK is an uh, energy sensor in the uh, in liver tissue. FGF1 triggers the phosphorylation of AM AMPK and uh, its downstream ACC phosphorylation. That means AMPK most likely involved in FGF1 regulation of the uh, metabolic function, the anyway, the beneficial effect of FGF1 on liver. So specific answer, the target tissue or target CO in the liver tissue, we use the hepatocyte, the primary hepatocyte from mice. We use uh, SRNA to knock down NOV2 in liver cells. We can see after knockdown NOV2 expression in the liver, significantly reduce the NOV2 nuclear, and means nuclear fraction of NOV2, nuclear accumulation significantly removed, uh, at least reduced. Also inhibited the downstream HO1 and the uh, NCO1 expression. That means the NOV2 knockdown significantly block the FGF1 triggers the antioxidant response in the liver tissue. However, NOV2 knockdown has no significant effect on the FGF1 affects the liver fatty acid synthesis. But in, if we knock down AMPK in the liver uh, cells, we can say uh, knock down liver uh, AMPK significantly reduce the ACC phosphorylation and uh, at the same time inhibited the effect of FGF on fatty acid synthesis and uh, NOV2 mediated uh, and the oxidant ox response in the liver tissue. Then we use uh, liver specific um, hepatocyte specific MPK knockout mass to conform to one that they are in vitro cell culture finding. So we use this uh, liver specific knockout mass and uh, treat this mass with a high fat and a high sugar diet to induce the fat in liver. We can say after MPK knockout, the effect of FGF FGF1 on liver and Never lipid accumulation significantly blocked, almost completely abolished the, the beneficial effect of FGF1 mutant on the liver, uh, liver lipid metabolism. So this study uh, basically uh, took together FGF1, hyperglycemia, hyperlipidemia in diabetes somehow inhibited the activity of phosphorylation of AMPK and uh, inhibited nuclear translocation of NOV2 and uh, the antioxidant response. That means it triggers the oxidative damage in the liver tissue. Also, inhibited AMPK and uh, enhance the lipogenesis, that means uh, fatty acid synthesis, induce the lipid accumulation in the liver tissue, induce lipid disorder, and the both of autism stress and lipid disorder contribute to the development of fatty liver. FGF1 can activate its receptor, receptor 4, and then triggers the phosphorylation of MPK, induces the downstream antioxidant response, and also inhibits the pathogenesis in the liver tissue, and then reverse or prevent the development of fatty liver in, in mice. So this data just uh, published in hepatology in this, in this June. So if we want, because I did not include uh, all the data right here, if I have interest and I have potential collaboration, want to say more detail about this study, please read this paper. So after this study, uh, my postdoc, Min Zhang, joined my lab. So we st because he has uh, the background in atherosclerosis study, we studied this study. We want to see, to test it, what's the effect of FGF1 on the development of atherosclerosis. After being left my, 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 my lab and uh, Zoe con was, is continued on this study right now. So before we started our study, we reviewed the literature. We found that there is a pioneer study in 1993 GSI paper already discussed the association of FGF1 with uh, uh, atherosclerosis plaque formation in patients. They found that uh, 
both FGF1 is uh, expressed in, astro, uh, in, in the plug at both MRI and protein levels. Most likely, FGF1 produced uh, secreted by the uh, plug macrophage contributes to the uh, pathogenesis of the atherosclerosis. How, however, this study just uh, is a uh, pretty small uh, sample size. For example, the control just three right here, the plug sample, the plug specimen, uh, specimen just the six pa patients right here. So the, also this is just the observation association study. We don't know this association is beneficial or detrimental contribute to the uh, development of atherosclerosis or this is also a competitive response try to the body try to reverse the development of atherosclerosis we don't know yet so to direct, to direct the answer to this question we use the uh, atherosclerosis animal model this is apoe nacolimus apoe nacolimus is a typical uh, classical animal model to study atherosclerosis development in in northern so we treat this, we use this mass and uh, induce the speed up the development of atherosclerosis, use high fat and a high cholesterol diet. And then we treat this mass with uh, the vehicle and the uh, white FGF1 and the mutant FGF1 for three, for three months, uh, 12 weeks. And um, at the same dose as we treated before in di type 2 diabetes. And then we check the uh, phenotype of for atherosclerosis. So this is the apple in mice with a normal diet. So normal diet uh, of normal diet, uh, apple in mice feeding with normal diet will um, can spontaneously develop atherosclerosis, but it's much slower than the high 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 fat and the high cholesterol diet. You can see that the plaque right here is very small in the normal diet mice. But after high fat and the high cholesterol diet, you can see. The, the plug so almost uh, blocked the, the arch of the aorta right here. Also the branch, get the, you can see the pale, the pale white indicated the accumulation of uh, lipid right here, probably also the ca calcification of the tissue right here. But after white type and the mutant FGF and treatment, you can see the plug size significantly reduced right here. Also, right here, the plug size is much smaller than the mice without without treatment. So the, we further isolate the whole alpha tree and stain the alpha tree with the oil red, uh, oil red oil, and to see the deposition of uh, lipid. You can see this uh, high fat, high cholesterol diet treatment with uh, fading without without treatment. The lipid accumulation is very obvious, it's much higher than the control. So after treatment, you can see the lipid accumulation deposition significantly reduced. We summarize the, the, this data right here. Then we further check the outer sinus. So that's the outer uh, inside the, of the heart. We can see this is the normal diet, this is a high, high high fat and high cholesterol diet, you can see the plug size is much higher, it's much bigger than the control. After treatment, the plug size they significantly obviously reduced, right? So, because uh, macrophage infiltration is a typical phenotype of the uh, atherosclerosis development, so we also detect the macrophage infiltration in the uh, outer uh, centers. This is a mice without treatment. The macrophage infiltration is much, um, is very, is very few. But uh, after high fat, high cholesterol diet treatment, the red corner indicates the macrophage infiltration is uh, much higher, much uh, the number is much higher than the control. So after treatment, the macrophage infiltration and uh, significantly reduced. So. As I mentioned, just mentioned that atherosclerosis infiltration in the in the inside the blood vessel wall and the formation formation of foam cell. Foam cell that means the macrophage uptake the lipid, uh, lipid protein uh, or cholesterol. Uptake too much cholesterol will form uh, develop the will form the foam cell. If too much chronic uptake of the 
oxidized LDL, low density lipoprotein, will induce the apoptosis of macrophage. And uh, the too much apoptotic macrophage accumulation in the, inside the blood wall build up the plaque in, inside, the blood, uh, inside the blood wall right here. So that means macrophage is uh, the primary important mechanism for the development of atherosclerosis. So we firstly test the if FGF1 has a direct effect on the macrophage form cell formation. Here is the human cell line macrophage. This is the mouse uh, macrophage cell line. This is the without oxidized LDL treatment. This is the ways oxidized LDL treatment. So after oxidized LDL treatment, the lipid accumulation significantly higher than the control, right? Both of the cell lines that indicated the formation of a foam cell. So after different dose of FGF1 treatment, but we did not see a obvious effect of FGF1 on the lipid accumulation, neither increase nor decrease. We can quantify this data right here. So this, this piece of data indicates that probably the beneficial effect of FGF1 on the development of atherosclerosis is not directly through regulating the foam cell formation of macrophage, right? There's a, probably most likely other mechanism involved in this process. So then we directly check the cluster level in the blood. This is the total, total uh, blood uh, cluster level. So after this is without treatment, this is with treatment, you can see both white type of FGF1 and mutant FGF1 significantly reduced, decrease the uh, total cluster level in the blood. Uh, similarly, VLDL, uh, LDL and VLDL also decreased, but it has low significant effect on the HDL and the triglyceride in these mice. As we know, so both liver and intestine has an important role to induce, to regulate the homeostasis of lipoprotein or cholesterol in the, in, the, in the whole body. So liver is the major organ to synthesize endogenous cholesterol. Liver, the intestine is the primary organ to uptake the dietary or bile, bile cholesterol through the intestine epithelial cells and then transport the di dietary cholesterol to the blood to regulate the homeostasis of whole body lipoprotein uh, 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 balance, homeostasis. So based on this, uh, uh, this uh, knowledge, we actually performed a systemic preliminary study, but uh, because of the limitation of the time, I, I won't go too much detail about the preliminary data. I just want to show our primary hypothesis right here based on the, our current preliminary data. We had our current hypothesis that probably high fat and high cholesterol diet uptake, feeding, and uh, increase the intestine cholesterol absorption, absorption and uh, transport into the blood. Also, liver synthesis uh, cholesterol also contribute to the high level of uh, cholesterol in the blood. Both contribute to the development of uh, atherosclerosis plaque formation. So FGF1 most likely can inhibit the intestine cholesterol absorption through this uh, mediator. Also inhibit the endogenous hepatocyte liver cholesterol synthesis through this kind of mechanism. So I, 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 I don't want to spend too much time to explain this one because we need uh, much more data to support this hypothesis. Yeah, so we just uh, submitted this hypothesis to, uh, to NIH in this January, in this uh, February, and uh, we, we got the score in June. The, we got a nice score, like four percentile, probably it's, found, it's foundable. We, even we did not get the formal notice yet, it's uh, uh, in, pro, uh, in processing, yeah. So uh, basically, this is so far today I want to share with you guys. I want to uh, uh, thank my, all my collaborators inside the University of Louisville, Dr. Kai, Dr. Uh, Windergast, Dr. Feng, and Dr. Deng.
also on other collaborators from Maryland and also from NYU, Dr. Li from China. And uh, I, I published my funding source from ADA, JDRF, and IH. This is, uh, yeah, education, uh, continuing education code right here. So that's my data I want to show right here. I want to, uh, thanks for all for your attention. I would like to take any question. Thank you all. Thank you. Sharing, you'll see some. Yeah, uh, let's see, there's some. Oh, there's no person yet. Yeah, it's. Just talking to one of our colleagues, and he was uh, mentioning the recent ASLE meeting, the FGF family. You talked about one and mentioning 19 and 20. Yeah, sure. Yeah. There was a lot of interest in yeah, sure, yeah. sampling, which we commented on. Yeah, recently, you know, uh, especially FGF 21, yeah, uh, Eli Lilly, also other companies, yeah, spend too much money and want to translate the FGF one into clinical situation to treat diabetes, also probably diabetic compl complications. But uh, they spent almost uh, 10 years already, but uh, not successful yet. They produce the different of mutant of GF1, also analog, but uh, I don't know uh, the exact uh, uh, problem is, but uh, still on the way, right? Yeah. Uh, Another is FGF lighting. FGF lighting has a similar function of FGF uh, FGF21 can regulate both the glucose and the lipid metabolism. But FGF1 has a similar problem, like uh, F, uh, FGF lighting has a similar problem as, F, as FGF1, because FGF lighting is very, is uh, uh, is uh, uh, significantly associated with the development of HCC. So that's probably uh, that's the potential risk uh, side effect, adverse effect of the FGF lighting. Uh, I don't know if there's any group want to try to translate the FGF 19 into clinical situation. For FGF 1, we, why we are uh, um, interested in FGF 1? Because uh, in animal study, at least, we found that FGF 21, if uh, sensitized uh, glucose, Lead at least seven dose injection after one week treatment can see a little bit the uh, effect on the uh, sensitized insulin uh, uh, effect and the lower in blood glucose. But uh, for FGF1, it's worth uh, just one dose, six hours can significantly decrease the blood glucose in, in animal. The most important is no hypoglycemia. Even when we increase the dose to one, two, three, Microgram per kilo bar, per kg body weight, there's low hypoglycemia. So we don't know the, the exact mechanism yet, but it's 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 striking, yeah, right? It's very interesting. Another most important another study, another two study, central FG1 one dose injection can completely almost completely cure the diabetic phenotype. Even in clinical studies, nobody will allow you to inject one dose in the in the brain, but uh, the mechanism, if we can, uh, we can uh, totally understand the mechanism, we probably can uh, just uh, uh, give the FGF1 through helpful injection or probably through oral intake of FGF1 can has a similar effect, probably. So where do you inject intracerebral? Where do you inject it? Uh, actually, uh, actually, because I'm not an expert in the, in the brain, mm -hmm. I just know the central ventricle any, I don't know exactly the remember the, the, the location of the injection, but it, the paper has uh, detailed information. Uh, yeah, just, I just uh, uh, found this effect, it's, it's uh, yeah, striking, it's uh, very interesting. There are some questions there. Well, oh yeah, nice. Great work, how do you translate the work to humans? Yeah, so the first question is a nice, nice point. Uh, how do you translate your work to humans? So, uh, 
At least so far, we we did not have we do not have a clear plan yet because we still have a uh, long way to go. Because we need uh, so far, we just uh, tested the metagenic effect in different tissue. We all tested the metagenic metagenic tissue, uh, effect in liver tissue and liver cells, also in kidney, but uh, we did not do another other toxic effect evaluation yet. So before we translate in human, we need a systemic different animal model, mouse, rat, probably monkey, different animal model to, to make sure it's safe. And then probably we need to test the uh, therapeutic, uh, therapeutic effect in animal, in different animal model, and then to the phase one uh, clinical study. Yeah. The second question is, uh, have you looked at the effects on hypertension with the FGF1? Uh, have you looked at the effect uh, of FGF1 on hypertension? So actually, I have this kind of interest in want to, uh, to test this, its effect on hypertension. Uh, probably more than 30 years ago, there is publication in, in there's two publications in science. Yeah, very, very uh, uh, pioneer study. They found they basically they use the in vitro study, use uh, like uh, isolated like uh, extravivo, isolated the blood vessel, and then treat the blood vessel with different uh, dose of FGF1 and uh, to test the relaxation of the blood vessel. They found that the FGF1 can relax, can relax and reduce the tension of the blood vessel in in, in extravivo conditions. So that paper is very interesting. Another paper also uh, I remember. I don't know the detail yet. So they also found, but they found, they found the opposite effect. If you find, yes, the development of hypertension. So we don't know if we, our, the white type of FGF1 and the mutant FGF1 can, has any effect on the hypertension development in animal model, also in human. We don't know yet. Once we have uh, uh, enough post, <laughs> has this background information, uh, knowledge, we can work on that model. At least uh, we did not do that right now. So could you run your experiment in type two mutant mice uh, hematopoietic mutation who develop advanced atherosclerosis so to be potentially important in human as well? Probably if, yeah, actually we can try in so far, in our in, in my new R1, the proposed R1, we just uh, try to use the DNA animal model, use uh, APOE, also LDL receptor nucleomass. This is a classic two animal model to study uh, atherosclerosis development in, in mouse. So we use that two mouse, two mouse model, use different dose and different time course to see the effect of FGF1 on the development of atherosclerosis. Now, anyway, this is a good suggestion. Yeah, the type two mutant mice, probably we can try in our future study. Yeah, if FGF1 has the effect on the development of atherosclerosis to mimic the human phenotype in animal model, if we have a similar effect as we observed in APOE mice. Yeah, this is the literature. Thank you for the literature. and. Uh, in what system do you over express FGF1? We, we, we produce the FGF1 in bacteria, use uh, uh, genetic engineering, engineering, and we clone the gene in a vector and transfect to the, the bacteria, and then we can use uh, fermentation, can produce a uh, uh, large amount of FGF1 for animal study. We, so now, now we have uh, enough uh, protein in our hand. If uh, someone has interest in one of collaboration, we can provide, provide the recombinant protein for animal study. If we purchase the FGF1 from company, commercial FGF1 is very expensive for animal study, yeah. So this is what was the question. Do you use FGF1 diabetes? Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's what we are we are thinking about that we because you know in, in animal study we need uh, uh, repeated injection uh, in animal 
we will have a similar effect on uh, like uh, insulin injection. You know, in clinical situation, repeated in, insulin injection will induce the local uh, local sickness, right? The tissue sickness. The F2 injection has a similar effect in animal. So we want to use uh, like uh, AAV, uh, 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 adeno associated virus. Want to deliver transgenic uh, like uh, um, virus and mediate the overexpression of mutant. We, we probably will need to try different dose of virus and then just uh, probably optimize the dose of FGF1 expression. And uh, if just one dose virus injection can completely uh, prevent or re reverse the phenotype of the, uh, diabetes, even in the pre-diabetes or in established diabetes. We, we are pl planning to try to test that. Yeah, that's interesting, yeah. Thank so you. How, how exactly does it work? Is it insulin independent or is it? Basically, yeah, so far the mechanism is not so clear. Mm -hmm. in, two, in 2014 paper, Nature, Dr. Ron Evans, uh, Evans paper, they use uh, um, adiposite FGF receptor knockout mass. They found that after high fat diet injection uh, uh, feeding, FGF1 has no significant effect on uh, lower in blood glucose in high fat diet induced uh, hypoglycemia. Actually, it's not a, can, probably cannot be called a hypoglycemia because high fat diet only cannot induce DBDB like high high blood glucose. But uh, after adipotissue FGF1 receptor knockout, the FGF1 uh, effect uh, uh, Almost disappear. So they conclude that FGF1 sensitizes insulin signaling through edible tissue. But uh, based on, I mentioned several paper, paper Nature paper published in 2000, in, uh, in 2000. Also, two papers published in, in Diabetes 2016 and uh, 2019. FGF1 has direct effect on the pancreatic beta cell function, right? Yeah. So if FGF1 R1 signaling attenuated deletion, FGF1 signaling will induce the development of type 2, uh, type 2 diabetes. If a central or peripheral injection of FGF1 can increase the secretion of insulin in the beta cell, right? Also, FGF1 also mediated the overnutrition induced the, the development of um, compensative depletion of beta cell, right? Yeah, probably also also another important mechanism. FGF1 also works on the beta cell directly, probably. Yeah, but we need the evidence uh, for the more more evidence to answer that question. Yeah. So does FGF do anything to fibrosis? You know? Yeah, sure. Yeah, if uh, yeah the hepatology paper we in, we include that data. In, in high fat, high cholesterol diet in apple in mice, chronic feeding these mice will induce the liver fibrosis. After FGF treatment can further increase the liver fibrosis. But the mutant has much lower, yeah, no second sex. So it should be kind of a drawback of using FGF, correct? Uh, sorry. But you don't want fibrosis. Yeah, I don't want a fibrosis. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Because if this is going to promote fibrosis, then yeah. On one hand, it, it is helping, but on the other Yeah, that's the side effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Because one of the problems, like with IGF, mm -hmm. is a similar issue. Yeah. Because when they use IGF, IGF can also uh, improve insulin sensitivity and lower blood sugar on the face. Uh -huh. But it also worsens, uh, has some role in retinopathy and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a question, eventually it never became a drug. No. Yeah, yeah. For the FGF1 translation, we still has uh, yeah. probably has a similar uh, problem. I think we need uh, we need to do we need to test, right? Yeah, we need to do the safety and the side effect. Uh, what's the effect on different uh, like uh, biological phenotype like that, fibrosis, tumor migration, tumor genesis, like that. Yeah, even the mutant FGF1. This is just a preliminary preliminary data to show that. I think it's the FGF1. It's uh, it's uh, like uh, it's uh, it can be used uh, pro drug, right? Like uh, as a candidate, we can modify, improve that. Probably also we can synthesize different growth factor. For example, a piece of FGF1 combined with FGF21 
properly combined together can reduce its uh, side effect but improve its uh, safety like that. Yeah. Yeah. In, there's another question. There's other question. Has the university protected your IP? I don't know. What do you mean? IP, I mean IP address? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, has the university filed a patent on your behalf? Uh, intellectual property, right? Yeah, uh, basically we, we have the patent with the NYU uh, because uh, basically uh, we focused on the uh, phenotype study, the uh, pharmaceutical study, the, the primary design, that's our collaborator in NYU. They have the property in IP IP protected. Yeah. Can you can you comment on your new new view of FTF with FTF lighting FTF twenty one and other in the literature? Yeah. Actually, as uh, as I mentioned just uh, uh, several uh, question before this one, uh, FTF one. We, uh, because the FGF1 is much stronger, for insulin sensitizing is much stronger, just one is uh, much faster than FGF21. Uh, so we, we like um, FGF1 more than FGF1. <coughs> also FGF21, uh, when it's always spend big money uh, on the development, so we cannot compete with them, you know, right? Yeah, so we, why we focus on FGF1. Also, FGF lighting, as I mentioned, the FGF lighting has a similar um, problem as the white type FG, uh, FGF1. Uh, it's uh, associated with the development of uh, uh, liver cancer. So FGF1 is much safer, but uh, uh, its effect is not uh, good enough, probably, also, it has also its uh, uh, problem uh, stability, pro protein stability. Also, has other problems. I don't I don't know the detail because I did not focus on FGF and recombinant protein. Yeah, no other question anymore. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.